Well, I hadn't planned on doing another video, but y'all know how this stuff works. Sometimes the inspiration comes in and you just can't help it. So, um, everybody has been uh, putting up videos talking today about the different things that are going on. And uh, it led me, or actually I was led to this last night. <coughs> um, about a little faith. And um, I was going to do a poem. I found a couple of really nice poems to read. Um, but I don't know if I can make it through a poem. Um, but I thought I'd read a couple of scriptures because this actually leads me to another revelation. I just mentioned it yesterday. I had a really stark revelation. I was going to do a separate video on, so I'm going to tie it to the back end of this. But it's an interesting number that I found in the Bible. It's a very specific number and it's mentioned at least twice specifically. Uh, but let's cover a couple of scriptures about a little faith. Matthew 14, 31, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? You're going to see a running theme in these scriptures. James 1, 6-8, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So what is Jesus saying and, and James? They're saying to stand in your faith. Look at yourself. Where Ask yourself, where do I have faith? Where am I putting my faith? Is it in the Lord or is it in things I associate with the Lord? Is it in grace, in our Father's grace? Or is it in my church or in the people that I go to church with or books or something like that other other men's understandings where is your faith lie it's great to do research it's great to read and get other people's perspectives and everything we don't put faith in that we put faith in the author of those things which is god and then jesus christ jesus christ created us he was there at the beginning so when we establish faith stand in that faith read the bible and listen to the scriptures but stand there where you're at and don't be moved because you want to, at some point, your faith has to develop to the point where you become part of the foundation. You can be linked up to the cornerstone. Um, <clears throat> not everybody does that as these scriptures cover. Um, the numbers I'm going to show you at the end of this are really going to blow you away. And uh, it definitely warrants more research. But um, we see a lot of people that are struggling. Um, they can start by believing, uh, like the Bible says, you know, many learn all day long, but they never come to the full understanding of the truth. A lot of people start out good and then they fall by the wayside. The, the parable of the sower is a great example of it there. They'll spring up, they'll do real great, and then they fall away. So it's a, and this is an inward process. We look at where we are standing. Look at where you are. Me and David Benjamin had an interesting conversation last night about the spirit, the internal spirit. And how when you're doing videos especially, or if you're preaching to other people, it, it doesn't seem right at first, but then you feel it come out of you. It, it comes from the abdomen. Um, and it's a flow. Uh, like the Bible says, uh, out of his belly will flow uh, living waters. And this is the spirit. Uh, I start these some of these videos, I have no idea what I'm going to share. And then it just comes. It just starts to flow. This is the spirit. This is the spirit working, projecting out of you. Um, and this comes with more learning and more study, but sometimes when you don't have the right words, there it is. Um, my big thing is I don't know scripture. A lot of people can memorize scripture. I can barely memorize just a couple of them. But when I get into a conversation with somebody, just rapid fire, the scriptures are coming off like nothing. And other people are like, how do you remember that? I said, I don't remember that. That's the Spirit calling those things out. These things develop as your faith develops. These are things that come up. Uh, you learn to not look at the financial issues that you're having in your life. You learn not to have the problems that you're having in your life. As your faith develops and you learn to rely on God for everything, to rely on Jesus Christ for everything, you start to realize that I don't have to sweat these things. I don't have to worry about them. This is the building of faith. So again, in James 1, 6 through 8, he's saying... If you're going to ask, ask in faith. Stand in faith and say, okay, I'm asking for this. And then believe it. 
and then walk away and just let it happen. Um, I'm talking to a buddy of mine, and he's uh, worried about his family being saved. I was like, ask in faith and then leave it alone and let God work. It's very possible that uh, many of our family members will have to go through the tribulation. When I show you these numbers at the end, it's going to kind of put that in perspective. They may have to go through the tribulation. And one thing I want you to remember is in Daniel and in John, in the book of Revelation, they both had the same vision. And the number they gave of the people that were standing in the throne room were 10,000 times 10,000. And thousands of thousands of, were ministering to God. Then you go a couple of chapters further in Revelation. And uh, John said, I saw a number of people that no, but no man could number. They were innumerable. Well, why did it give a specific number and then not a specific number? Well, it's because most people, the revival is going to happen during the first half of the tribulation. Most people are going to come out of the tribulation saved. It's not going to be that big of a group at the beginning. Um, and we'll cover that in a second. So when you're, when you're wondering about faith, first of all, read and study the Bible as much as you can. Get your opinion and your authority from that. But... Look at your faith and where am I putting my faith? What am I trusting in? Who am I trusting in? Matthew 17, 20 says, He said to them, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. There's my buddy in Corpus Christi fishing. Uh, and nothing will be impossible for you. And this is the truth, and I've seen this happen a few times in my own life situations that shouldn't have gone a certain way and then they did uh, my ankle is one of them i was actually telling my pastor about that and he said but they said that you couldn't have surgery and you'd be in the brace the rest of your life i said exactly he said when's the last time you put that brace on i said that tuesday that monday after you guys laid hands on me he goes but it didn't heal right away i was like i know i said i, I stood in faith i told the lord okay i'm gonna take that leap i took it off and i don't even know where it is and i've been walking without it ever since i have i have still have swelling and torn tendons in this ankle yet i walk perfectly normal so sometimes that you have to take that leap of faith you have to test your own faith okay god here's what i'm going to do this is what you said i'm taking your word for it and just walk out and see what happens you will not be put to shame if you have faith in god ephesians 2 8 i'm going to do ephesians 2 8 and 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god not of works Lest any man should boast. It's not about what we do. It's about what God has done. It's about what Jesus has done. And we put our faith in that. And if we do, we can do that one simple thing, everything else will fall in line right behind it. In Hebrews 11, 1 through 40, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um... The conviction of things not seen. So you believe without seeing. You believe without proof. For by it the people of old received their commendation. Listen closely to what he's saying. For by it, for by faith, the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So he's talking about evolution creationism argument. Right here. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible, God made it. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he, uh, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he could not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. Why? Because he had faith. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my head's all stopped up. So Hebrews eleven six says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. It is about to come down raining outside. Good, we need it. Great day to be sick when it's raining. Just lay on the couch and watch movies. So Hebrews eleven six and and this he's telling us he's speaking so powerfully in little scriptures like this it's the little details that really say the most but he's telling us look if you don't have faith you cannot please me 
You can walk however you want to walk. You can do however you want to do. But if you want to draw near to me, if you want to learn about me, if you want to understand what I'm doing here and who I am towards you, you must believe in me. You must have faith in me and what I do. And trust and know that I am your God and I will deliver you. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. He will deliver us. He will show us the rewards he has waiting for us in heaven. And we merely must have faith. And that's it. Simple. Easy. Well, sometimes it's not simple. Sometimes it's hard. A lot of people think they have faith, but they put their abilities in fulfilling the law or obeying the Ten Commandments to achieve that, and they're not putting their faith in the right thing. I know I can't do it perfect. I can't walk perfect. I can't speak perfectly. I can't custom tailor my what I say perfectly. I can't study perfectly. I don't have the perfect understanding um, I, my messages aren't perfect, but I've come to the place in my faith where I realize I don't have to be perfect. All I need to do is what he told me to do at the beginning of the year. Share my word. I'll deal with everything else. You got it. And whether right or wrong, I'm going to just share the word and I'm going to let God lead what comes out when I do these messages. A lot of these messages, I've even felt they were very anointed because of the message that was being given. Some, I was pretty critical of myself. Some, I don't think that they were very good. But nevertheless, I keep doing it because I've been led to do that kind of stuff. And a lot of people fear. Well, I'm not good enough with the Bible. Well, I don't know it that well. Well, I don't want to make God mad at me. If it's on your heart to do something involving the kingdom, do it with full faith. Put your faith in him and just let him lead your ministry. And he will lead it for fruit. He puts these things in our past for a reason. These are all little tests of our faith. What am I in adversity? When people are, are chastising you, will you stand up for Jesus? I've yelled Jesus' name at people because they were mocking. I've gone out of my way to say his name in front of people. Go ahead, mock me some more. Because I'll just keep professing the name of the Lord. And this is faith. You you know. Who has the power? You know who has saved you. You know where your salvation comes from. And you stand in that. And if people don't like it or people have a problem with it, that's okay. They can do that. So here again in Luke 17, 6, it says, And the Lord said, If you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Remember when Jesus went up to that fig tree? He was hungry and wanted some figs, and there were none. So he said, be withered and, and die. And the tree just dried up right there in front of him. And everybody freaked out. Faith. Now, Jesus was unique. But we have the access, that same access to that same power to do those things. I've used it before. I use it with animals and critters. Um, other people run from wasps and bees and that. I stand and face them. And I've done this a bunch of times in the presence of other people. Hey, there's nothing here for you. Go away. And he left. And they fly off. And they just stand there looking at me. It's like, what, you guys don't realize we have this authority? We had one flying around the church one day. And in, in my mind, I was thinking, um, if he'll land on my arm, I can just open the door and let him out. Uh, because people were getting distracted by it from the message. And uh, I'll be darned if that he didn't fly over and land right on my elbow. So I got up and I walked over and opened the uh, door. And he jumped off my elbow and took off flying. You know, it seems like a small thing, but when you when you understand how faith works, just like the examples I gave in these scriptures, that's we have that kind of authority. We have that kind of power. And this is a, a constant growth to build this kind of faith. But most of this stuff will come from understanding. Uh, these are things you should, you should be praying for. I did a video on that. And read the scriptures as it pertains to those things. I've showed you guys how I do it. Doing the Google search, openbible.info, Bible study tools, and look at the list of scriptures. And then let your study lead from that. Well, that scripture stands out to me. Then go read that chapter. And look at the little details. Read it slow. Think about the things that you're reading. And this kind of stuff will open up to you. Because you're trying to learn about God. And when he sees you do that, he's like, I got one. Let me show him some cool stuff. 
and they will lay it all out in front of you, and it's just completely, you'll be, I'm going to use an old man word, you'll be flabbergasted at what you're shown, and it just, it's astonishing to see all these things, and we read the Bible and miss them, and then all of a sudden, bam, there they are. <coughs> now, little faith. So, in the Bible, and I did the video mentioning this stuff. Oh yeah, Micah, oh, go read Micah 4. Whew. In the Bible, actually there's a, a two different books, uh, Micah and, was it Nahum? I had to go back and look. I'll do a separate video on those. Um, both of them talk about the tribulation and what's going to happen. And it blew me away when I read it. But when we start, when we look in Daniel 7. And if you guys watched that video I did, you saw that, what I was uh, linking it to. But in Daniel 7, he was talking about, let's see where it is. He was talking about the beast. But, here we go. So he's talking about the throne room. And the description he's giving is talking of the same thing that was in Revelation chapter 5. And But look at the number he gives. In verse 10, a fiery stream issued... And came forth from him before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. That is a, an extremely specific number. But now you can say that's generic. But then we go back here and we go to Revelation chapter 5. And look at what Revelation chapter 5 says. Jesus is taking the scroll. All the 24 elders fell down. Sang a new song, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us, and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Guys, that's the church, because that's the same description used in Corinthians and Thessalonians. Then listen to what he says here in verse 11. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne the living creatures, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Is this the same group of people Daniel saw? Because when I read this, it, to me, it's like, that's the church that's standing there, because it gives the same description. Now, 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. Thousands and thousands. I haven't been able to pin that number down, but that could be anywhere from one to 300,000, the best I could be, have been able to figure. Probably wrong on that. But think about that number for a minute, because when the rapture of the church happens, now, this may, may not be all the people either. Some of them may be scattered around heaven. But when the rapture of the church happens, the dead in Christ rise first. And they're taken up then we who are alive are changed and taken up with them. So for the last 2,000 years, this, is, this process has been happening. When I see this number, and I started to think about it uh, yesterday, and I thought, is that all that has faith? Was that all that was ready or all that was established for the last 2,000 years? Was 100 million plus or minus a million? And it, it really kind of, I was asking for confirmation on that. I was like, that can't be right. There had to be more than that. But then I look at what's going on in the world. Look at the other YouTube channels. Look at the video that Barry Scarborough and Watchman, uh, Watchwoman 65 did about Kanye. I, I shared a video from Jason A. about Kanye. Ty Green did a video about Kanye. And look at the things that are going on. Look at the, the what is it, The uh, they have a, resemblance of godliness but the ends thereof are destruction how many people we have pastors there are pastors tim mentioned it i've mentioned it a few times there are pastors that have pastored church all their lives they, they it's a generational thing they're third fourth generation pastor and they're not saved they just do it because that's what everybody else was doing how many people do we truly have that have faith that truly believe in the son of god that truly believe in jesus christ even back whenever jesus died and the apostles were building the church. Remember what they said? On several occasions, we've had people creeping in. They weren't really converted. But now they're trying to cause division. 
Now they're trying to create stripes. Look, look at the people they talked about they had to put out of the church because of things they were doing. Because they couldn't get fully on the other side of it. When you stop and you think about this, and it definitely warrants more research to dig deeper in the scriptures to see if any if more numbers were mentioned. It kind of puts it in perspective a little bit, thinking, man, how many people haven't actually established faith in Christ? Maybe they got to a certain point and then fell off. Then they're just going through the motions. Maybe they never came to any understanding of it. They just do it because somebody else does it. And it doesn't register with them. That's amazing. To me, that that is astonishing. If that's all there was for the last 2,000 years. Because when you read in the book of Revelation, it says, you know, and, and the rest of the dead weren't raised until the end of the thousand year reign. Were some people partly faithful? Halfway faithful? You know, because when you read further back, a couple chapters down, it talks about those that are coming out of tribulation. They said that they couldn't be numbered. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's seven. Here it is right here, verse nine. And these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number, no one could number, of the, all nations, tribes, peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and to the lamb this is a different group of people that were in chapter five all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped god saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. This is a different statement. They weren't saying this in chapter 5. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where do they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the, of the great tribulation. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. So it's a specific group of people being mentioned from a specific time period. And washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So from chapter 5 to chapter 7, two very different numbers. Two very different descriptions. There, there it talks about the 144,000 there in those verses. So we go back to chapter 6 because um, chapter 5 happens and then the first seal is open. That's chapter 6. And we see what's going on here. It talks about the horses, horsemen of the apocalypse going out. So there's a process. There's things going on in the world. We see famines. We see destruction. We see death. We see pestilences. He gets all the way down to the fourth seal. Fifth seal. Sixth seal. So... Yeah, see, he opens the sixth seal, great earthquake, stars fall from heaven. The sky recedes like a scroll. I mean, this is a major cataclysmic event going on. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, verse 15, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. So he's saying everybody hid. Everybody was trying to hide from this event. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And then we jump over here, and what does it say? After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. So we can see a clear timeline here. From chapter 5, Jesus takes the scroll. And we see a description of the church in that throne room with him. 
chapter 6. He opens the seals on the scroll. This starts the tribulation. And we see all the things that happen in the beginning part of the tribulation. And it gives a full description of it. Chapter 7, he says, after these things. After what things? Things that just happened. I saw four angels standing. So we see a timeline here. We see it being put together. And but what, what happens here? We have a number, 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. That's not that big, big of a number. And so I'm, I'm sharing this with you, with you guys and saying this because it's definitely worth looking into. And it goes along the lines with faith. Who actually has faith? Who actually believes in God? Am, am me putting YouTube videos up, is that establishment of my faith? No. If somebody who is living this the most righteous life you could ever point to and say, that's a righteous person, is that where they're... No, that's not establishment of their faith. These may be results of faith. But the faith is you coming to terms internally. Where What, am, what is my trust in? Because to me, Jesus is, is a regular person standing there. Some people put him far off. He's way up there. When I think about where I'm putting my faith, where I'm putting my trust, it is in the deity. It is in the entity. It is in the person or persona of Jesus Christ, who 2,000 years ago was nailed up on that cross and died, walked that land. That's where I put my faith in and my trust in. Because that's where my salvation comes from. Not in my abilities, not in my works, my, my good works. You know, And it's funny too, is that when you learn to, to, to differentiate the difference, all my, all my good works, all my stuff that I do is over here. My faith is right here. Then your desire, your driving force behind the things that you do becomes different. Now it becomes, I'm doing this because I love my fellow man. And I want to help them. My desire is to help them. Not to look good, not to anything like that. It's, it's to bless them with the things that the Lord has taught me. Then I come back here. Here's where my faith is. And I confide in the Lord. I talk to him constantly about every problem that I have and everything I ask. He's my friend. He's my brother. So look at yourself and, and just take a moment to sit down and go, whether you agree with the things that I share or, or any of the grace preachers, it doesn't matter whether we agree or disagree. Sit down and think about. Don't just go, well, I know I have faith. No, you don't know you have faith. Sit down and really think about it for a minute. Take the opportunity to go, okay, Lord, let's reason this out. Remember that scripture? Work out your salvation. Let's, let's sit down and reason together. Reason it out. Where am I placing my faith? Is it my ability to fulfill the Ten Commandments and live without sin, which is impossible? Even the apostles couldn't do it, and they were chosen. Is it my ability to fulfill the law? Impossible. They haven't been able to fulfill the law for 2,000 years since the temple was destroyed. And even then they weren't doing it all the way. Is it my ability to be a nice person? Is it my ability to do a lot of good works for other people? Is it my ability to give? My ability to tithe? My ability to do any of these things? Is it is it all based at all on those things? No. Those things are based on the faith. They are results of that established faith. And the more that faith is established, the more those things manifest. Because now you become a, a much better vessel to be used. And God will put more of those things in, in, in place. Like studying the Bible, for example. If you start out as a new Christian, you can't witness to anybody because you don't have the truth established in you yet. You don't know the scriptures. You don't know the story, so you can't answer specific questions. As you study and as you learn, now he'll send people to, to you to learn about those things because now you've gotten to the point where you can be used for that particular purpose. Um, I have a skill for um, an aptitude for uh, mechanics and, and automotive things and tractors motorcycles and all that kind of stuff i'm able to use that and he's able to use that to put me in positions to talk to other people I had a great conversation with my pastor yesterday while we were rewiring his his uh, flat trailer and it was about faith and trust it was about conscience so abilities these kinds of of abilities that you develop he uses them, each one. It's, he's a custom God. He uses each one of these to serve the kingdom.
but you have to figure out where you put your faith first. Because if you haven't put your faith in him, your Kanye West has his faith in his 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 uh, music. And he has his faith in his money. And he goes and he stands up there and he gets all kinds of accolades for what he's doing. He's become a Baptist minister. <laughs> but that's where his faith is. His faith isn't in the Lord. If his faith was in the Lord, he would come to realize there's some things I need to change in my life. I can't be doing these things. But that's him. And that's between him and the Lord. So where is your faith? Where have you established it? And, and how strong is it? We're all lacking in faith, every one of us. It, it's a building process throughout life. But when you start down that journey, you can't think of anything else and you can't go any other direction. So, so th think about those things and ask yourselves those questions. This isn't meant to uh, cause people to question or cause people to uh, deny. This is meant for you to, to dig into the scriptures a little deeper. Do more research. Look more into this. Don't believe me. Look more into this and see where you are. Because by doing that, by seeking out God, you can further and you can advance in your faith. And that's what he wants. He, learn about me. Learn about me and my ways and watch how your life changes. That's all, he, that's all he asked from us. I love you guys. I went on way too long. My throat's killing me now. Love you guys. I bless y'all in Jesus' name. Keep looking up, y'all. Keep watching. Um, we see all the events unfolding. The birth of the beast with seven whores and ten heads is going on in Israel this weekend. Um, all the armies are moving just like the Bible says, I'm going to call the armies of the earth to come to the Valley of Armageddon to fight with me. Uh, we see all these events unfolding. And uh, ask for discernment. Ask for revelation. Ask for understanding and wisdom and knowledge. And, and tell them, I want to know the things so I can bless others with them. You may not always get people that will listen. I have a hard time with that. I was mocked a few times last night at the Iron Sharpens Iron meeting, whether they realize they did it or not. But the fact is, is I share with them things they don't see and they don't find and they don't know how to research. And a couple of them are starting to come around. They're starting to realize, wow, okay, this stuff was real. Because every time I do one of those meetings and do the presentation, I'm able to slip a little bit of what's going on in there. Little seeds planted to wake people up. You never know. Anyway, be blessed, you guys. And... Uh, Stay strong. Stand in your faith. Stay faithful. Don't be moved. You know what the truth is? Stick with that. And I'll see you guys in the next video.